Want to know the latest in soccer? Then listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast from MLS, the World Cup, and the Premier League. We've got you covered. The latest update, the hottest matches, and news on the league's top players. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. David Beckham scores a goal to take England all the way to the World Cup Finals. Listen now. Thank you for listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast, where we discuss everything there is to know in the world of soccer, including the hottest summer transfers and the top games and competitions from all around the world. As always, I'm Ben and Alex. That's me. A little delayed there. Sorry, I was looking at at the recap stuff we're about to talk about. That's okay. Boom. Boom. But Alex is with me as always. Yeah, that's me. I'm Alex. Hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing quite well. Yourself? I'm good. You had a good weekend uh, in the world of soccer? Great weekend. We had the Olympics over the weekend. We had all the competitions from all around the world, as we mentioned. We have Europe's <laughs> leagues kicking off. We have mm-hmm. a couple more previews to talk about today. One league yet to start their season, which will happen this weekend. And then just sort of finally starting to get in the thick of things as we have... Premier League two weeks in, the French League, League One, two weeks in, and really just starting to get things going. Yeah, I can dig it. Absolutely. We're going to talk about one of my favorite favorite leagues in a minute. Absolutely. At least one of my, the leagues of one of my favorite teams. That's right. So we're going to start off the show talking and recapping the Olympics, talking the men's and women's. We had our gold medal games on Friday and Saturday, talking about those games as well as the bronze medal games. So we're just recapping the Olympics as a whole and soccer as a whole. Yeah. Then after a commercial break, we're going to jump in to doing two more league previews. I realized last week after we did the show that we did not do an Italian league preview, the Serie A. So we're going to do that today, although we have had one game already kick off for every team over the weekend. We'll still do a preview, talk about last year's table, as well as predictions for this year. And then Alex's favorite league, in my opinion, he talks about it a lot. Second favorite league. Behind behind Behind, the BPL? Premier League's my favorite. Okay, so... I, I really like the Bundesliga as well. I we're gonna too. we're gonna do a preview of the German Bundesliga, which gets started this weekend, mm-hmm. and then we're gonna end the show talking about some of the biggest games over the weekend. Some results we had La Liga getting kicked off, and then as well as some big games going into this weekend. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. But let's start, like you said, with the ending of soccer in the Olympics this summer, and that was the women's and men's finals, like you said, taking place Friday and Saturday. Almost identical finals. You have Germany and Sweden on the women's side and Germany and Brazil on the men's side. So let's start with the women's match. And you have Germany versus Sweden in the gold medal match there. Uh, It was a 2-1 win for the women of Germany. A pretty good game. You could say the um, German women kind of handled the... The, the year you know the Olympics pretty pretty well this year uh, you could you could say would you agree yeah they did lose that one game to Canada in the group stage but they did rebound obviously winning the gold medal Sweden kind of the surprise to me a really good women's soccer country but didn't expect them to come up with a silver medal they played a lot defensively kind of gave away a lot of possession and really tried to not let teams score unfortunately it did not work out for them against Germany they lose 2-1 but they did quite well against Brazil, and before that in the quarterfinal of the United States, they ended up winning both those games on penalty kicks. So getting a little luck going their way in PKs, but unfortunately they were not able to even have that be a question in the gold medal game as the Germans come out on top 2-1. Yeah, moving towards what was one of the definitely games of the Olympics, you could say, in soccer. I mean, it was billed as the gold medal match. It definitely showed up as such, and that was... Yes, the German versus Brazil game, the Germany Brazil game, went into PKs. They went through one one through regulation, extra time there, and then they ended up playing some PKs. And that's what you—I mean, if you're a fan, if you're a fan of neither team, if you're just a fan of the sport in itself, that's what you want, especially in a gold medal match. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, 
So we have Brazil coming out on top. It was a 1-1 game. Neymar had scored a beautiful free kick in the first half, and then Germany equalized. Really, in my opinion, this game and really this moment, in my opinion, we talked about on the sports show, was my moment of the Olympics, and in particular before for Brazil because they win the gold medal in their own country, sort of a little bit of a sort of payback at Germany for what they did two years ago in the World Cup with the 7-1 victory Mm -hmm. in the semifinal there. A A lot different, a lot different of teams, not as many great players on either side, really. So that's why I don't really call it much of a sort of payback, but just a little bit that they did top Germany. So Neymar scores the game-winning penalty to clinch the game for them. As soon as he scores, he starts crying, gets really emotional. A great moment for Neymar and for Brazil as a whole. Yeah, I mean it was it was I mean if as a German fan and as you know as you know if, this isn't new to anybody who's listened to the show before that I'm a fan of the German national teams, but um, if they were to lose to anybody, it's not that bad to lose to a team that you know got to win it in their home country. Right. So I mean that was cool for them and Neymar. I like Neymar a lot, so that was also you know that was nice to see. Um, you know, I would have hoped they would have won, obviously, would have, you know, would have had, um, matching, you know, women, men, gold medalists in that in sense. Soccer. Yeah. in soccer. But, you know, like you said, Neymar scored the, scored the goal to take the lead in the beginning of the game in the 27th minute and he scored it to end the game. So it's definitely a good game. Yeah. I'd, I'd say really in my opinion and in yours, when we did our, our Olympic preview of soccer, these are the two teams we said had the best chance to obviously win the gold medal and they showed up in the gold medal placing and the silver so in the men's side in the bronze medal game we had nigeria coming out on top of honduras 3-2 and in the bronze for the women we had canada coming out on top 2-1 over brazil so brazil Mm -hmm. unable to medal in both men's and women's soccer Mm -hmm. although germany did not win the gold medal i do think they had the mvp of the olympics and that being serge gnabry scored five goals looked really really good I'd say he even outplayed people like Neymar in these Olympics. When you, which, when you look at Neymar, I'd say Neymar really is the future of soccer. Only being 23 years old, look at what he's already accomplished. He's got a Champions League final, won multiple La Liga titles with Barcelona. Now you can add an Olympic gold medal to that resume. All you really aren't seeing from Neymar is a World Cup that's really major, you know. So definitely someone who's going to be, in my opinion, the guy five years from now as. Basically, the best player in the world. Well, I'd can say. you say the same thing for Serge Gnabry being kind of maybe the future face of the German national soccer? I mean, the kid, he's 21 years old. You know, he was really a standout player. He currently is playing for Arsenal. I'm sure you knew that. I did. Um, most of these guys, you know, almost every, literally everybody else besides him is in the Bundesliga currently. Um, but he's, you know, he's obviously pretty good, in, you know, to get out of there. I mean, Bundesliga is a good league, but to yeah. play for Arsenal yeah. in the much more, um, seen around the world i would say premier league he, i think he is you know not not to say just as bright in the future but he's you know he could have a very bright future ahead of him especially in german national soccer yeah for Gnabry, i'd say it's going to be a lot more difficult because germany is such a strong soccer powerhouse when you look at the men's team and you look at players like thomas muller Jerome Boateng, manuel neuer mesut ozil i love them all of them julian draxler you know, for Gnabry, it's going to be hard to kind of break into that squad. He was not in the Euros because he was going to play in the Olympics. I'm not sure if he would have made the team anyway. When I look at the German team, they definitely have a lot of great young players. Gnabry's one of them. I think sort of the main two that I look at are Julian Draxler, who currently plays for Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga, mm-hmm. and then Leroy Sané, who's only 20 years old and just got a transfer this summer to Manchester City in the Premier League. In so Premier League, yeah. I'd say those two guys are a little ahead of Gnabry as it stands, but Gnabry doing everything he can to sort of solidify that place, doing a great job in the Olympics. He is playing for Arsenal. I would expect him to sort of stay on the first team this year for the Gunners. He's gone out on loan the last couple of years, but he has been capable. He has scored in the Premier League and he did it when he was only 18 years old. So Yeah, I mean, he's not the youngest on this team this year. Max Christensen was the youngest. He's 19 years old. On the national team, but he's you know, if the Germany you know can play like this, and 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 Brazil in that sense, their futures in international soccer look pretty bright. Yeah, and f- coming from two great football nations, soccer mm-hmm. nations, 
Brazil and Germany. I'd say definitely the future is bright. A lot of great young guys for both sides. Brazil, I think, really just had a better team, honestly, and they have the best player in Neymar. Yeah, they're in the tournament for sure. Exactly. Look at people like Gabriel Jesus, who just got a transfer to Manchester City. He'll be coming over probably in January. He's going to stay in Brazil for now. And then you look at Gabriel Santos, Gabagol. He's been linked to a nickname. He's been linked to a ton of teams, like even teams in the Premier League, like Arsenal, Leicester City. So who knows where he might go with the transfer window winding down about a week from now. You know, maybe after the Olympics are done now, he can sort of determine his club football future. Mm -hmm. So who knows what will happen there. Yeah, it's interesting to look forward to. All right, well, hey, we'll take our first break. We'll come back and do some league previews. Am I correct in that statement? Ben? Yes, you are. All right, so don't go anywhere, guys, at the Soccer Podcast. Boom. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And welcome back to the Golden State Media Concept Soccer Podcast. I'm going to throw it to Ben because it's time for another league preview. Yes, we're going to be starting off this segment talking about Serie A, the Italian league, and then afterwards we will jump in to the Bundesliga, the German league. Yeah. So games have already gotten started. They did start last week. We should have done this preview last week, but oh well. Timing it'll have to. Off. It'll have to wait yeah. till this week. Unfortunately, so. it won't be as in depth because you know the league started, like we said. So right, so we'll just have to do an update on what happened over the weekend. For and then you're going to get the big in depth one on the Bundesliga. There we go. Boom. So, anyways, we had last year's champions. No surprise, Juventus. They are now the four time defending champion they won the league at 91 points napoli finished second at 82 points roma at third at 80 points and then we had a huge drop for inter milan coming in fourth at 67 points some big big teams not doing too well ac milan only 57 points really the not so much now but really the all-time best italian league side mm -hmm. in ac milan yeah. so <clears throat> not me. doing too well last year hopefully they can sort of rebound this year. They've already done quite well. They won their first game over Torino 3-2. And Carlos Baca, the Colombian striker, had a hat trick. That's pretty impressive in your first game. Yeah, and really Juventus, Napoli, Rome, Roma, Inter Milan. Of these yeah. teams that finished in the top four last year, I think Juventus are definitely still the heavy favorites. The one thing Juventus have to worry about is how they can replace Paul Pogba. Yeah, where'd he go again? Ah, oh, Man United. Woo. I love it. Yeah, I know. So for a record, 89 million pounds. So Juventus <clears throat> going to need to replace Paul Pugba. But I think they'll be just okay because they did bring in Miralem Pjanic, who came from Roma. He's going to play a lot similar position from Pugba, that midfield, that box-to-box -box guy, someone who can really get back and add with defense as well as get forward and add with the offense. So mm -hmm. I think Miralem Pjanic can really, really sort of replace Pogba. It's going to be hard. Pogba is a great player. But then for me, Juventus, the big addition, of course, is Gonzalo Higuain. He did score their winning goal on Saturday in the 74th minute over Fiorentina. They won that game 2-1. So Higuain already back and scoring goals like he did last year. For Napoli, who finished second, he had 36 goals in 35 games, did Iguain. So Napoli finished second at 82 points. I th would expect a drop this year. I mean, anytime you lose a guy like Iguain, someone who's capable of scoring that many goals, it's going to take a it's gonna take a toll on them. I don't see them finishing second this year in okay. Serie A. I do think Juventus will win the league. They mm -hmm. are going to be the favorites. But for Napoli, it's going to be hard. They don't have Iguain anymore. They still do have some great players, you know, Marek Hamšík, Jose Callejón, 
So definitely so still some good players for Napoli, but not the proven goal-scoring threat of Gonzalo Higuain. I, he should be able to do just fine with Juventus. I wouldn't predict 36 goals. They have a lot of great players who are capable of scoring goals. He should team up with Paolo Dybala, his, his you know Argentine player, both Argentinians. So I sh- they should link up quite well, and I think Juventus will do just fine. Yeah, I got Juventus winning this league too. I mean, Juventus is just a powerhouse over there. Right. They've, you know, like we said, they've won the league the last four years. Mm-hmm. If, if a team would challenge them, I would think it would be maybe Roma. But with Roma, they did lose Miralem Pjanic. That's a huge loss for them. They still have a pretty good midfield. Rajat Golan from, from Belgium. He's a great player. Roma are still a side that I think are capable of maybe making some noise. But I really don't see anyone challenging Juve. Gotcha. I mean, I can hardly agree with you. I mean, I can hardly not agree with you. Yeah, and then and we saw we saw some of these games on Saturday and Sunday in our first match day for Serie A. So we had Juventus winning two one, as I mentioned. Roma come on top against Udinese four nil. Milan win three two. And some Milan suffer a really bad defeat. They lose two nil to Chivo in match day one. So definitely mm. not the result they're looking for right mm-hmm. out the gates. Yeah, no, not not quite. And then one team you really like, Alex is a team that won 1-0 over Crotone. And that's Bologna. Yeah, Bologna. Yeah. Bologna. Bologna. I love saying their name. You love them. <laughs> okay, so anyways, so we have some teams starting off quite well. Juventus, Roma, AC Milan, Lazio 1-4-3 over Atalanta. So definitely a great start to the Serie A league. I agree with you on that side, Ben. And now, Alex, we're going to be moving on to what is that? The Bundesliga. Yes, the German Bundesliga Gets kicked off Friday. Your favorite team, Alex, Bayern Munich. Yes, sir. Kick off their season against Werder Bremen on Current Friday. Defending champions with a total end point score of 88. Yeah, that was from last year. Yeah, yes. that's what I'm saying. Current champions, what I'm saying, Ben. Yeah, so why don't you round down the rest of the okay. table? So, at least um, some of the tops. So I'll go, I'll go top five because it does drop off heavy after Bruce Dortmund came in second place there. 78 points. Uh, you know, kind of, it, it, they are one of the other teams that kind of does give Bayern Munich a little problem. You know, not necessarily the same level. I feel like Bayern Munich is really the best team. They're like uh, like Juventus in the same sense, you know? Yeah. I'm um, the powerhouse. But then you have, um, uh, sorry, I, I moved the table for a second. In third place, quite the drop off at 60 points, you have um, Bayer Leverkusen. Yeah. Leverkusen. You do have them uh, in third place there. 60 points, to set, again, 18 point drop off. So, you know, you look at that as the two main teams last year for sure were Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich there at the one and two. Uh, and then you have Borussia. I always try to say this the best I can because I got to make my German ancestors proud. Like you've told you before, my dad is full of German. That's why I like the Bundesliga so much family over there and all that good stuff. I actually had um, a cousin. Her boyfriend played for um, Werder Bremen. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool, right? Really interesting. Uh, That's but, quite an accomplishment. Right. Uh, but Borussia Mo- Mönchengladbach. Yeah, Borussia Mönchengladbach. Yeah, Borussia Mönchengladbach finished at 55 points. So, you know, 33 behind the eventual winner, Bayern Munich, there. And then to round out the top five, you had FC Schalke, and they finished uh, with a total of 52 points. So um, I would say probably leading into this year again, you have Bayern Munich and then the rest of the field, Borussia Dortmund kind of coming in second there. See how that's going to look. Um, they get started this weekend, as a matter of fact. Am I right in that sense? Yeah, so on Friday, Friday we have Bayern Munich yet. against Werder Bremen. Werder Bremen right there. Saturday we have action um, all across the league. Borussia Dortmund and Mainz. Um, you have, the, like I said, the fifth overall finish of last year. Um, Schalk and I turn Frankfurt. You have FC Augsburg and I don't know how to ever say it, but Wolfsburg. I don't, I, do you say the VFL? I do. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I say, I say the V for the Ws. Like, okay. I don't say Wolfsburg. I say Wolfsburg. Well, yeah, I say, yeah, that's how you do it. Right, it's Wolfsburg, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah I, just, I just say Wolfsburg. Yeah, it's Wolfsburg, bro. Uh, and yeah. then you have a couple of uh, a couple games going, a little, you know, in the sense of lower-level teams, um, in the sense of Bayern Levers- Leverkusen and Borussia Mönchengladbach. I think that's probably the best game of this weekend. Yeah, do you? You think that's in They terms finished of- fourth and third. Yeah. And then they're matching up in match day one. Definitely the best game yeah, of the in, season. In terms of, uh, of of competition there for the first week. Right. Th- those will be good games. Yeah, Saturday's a, it's a heavy week for, I mean, heavy day for the, the Bundesliga for sure. 
a lot, a lot of games that day. You have uh, six games on Saturday. Moving to Sunday, you have two games between Leipzig and TSG Hoffenheim and Eartha Berlin and SC Freiburg. So this uh, Saturday and Sunday are going to be pretty, pretty heavy action games. packed. Yeah, pretty. I mean, it's the start of the year. You, you know, it's like it's like NFL Sunday. You have, you know, you have sixteen games. Right. You know what I mean? So they just jump right into it. Um, now, what is your look, your outlook on the Bundesliga heading into the 2016-17 year in terms of uh, do you think Bayern takes it again? Do you think Borussia Dortmund gives them a run for their money this year? What, what are your thoughts? Well, I definitely think we're going to see a lot similar result as we did last year. Bayern Munich, number one. Borussia Dortmund, number two. They're definitely the top two teams in Germany. Really, in my opinion, a two-horse race with some other teams mixed in there that are capable of doing stuff, making some noise, being Bayer Leverkusen. And I'll say I'll say maybe more last year, not so this year, but Borussia Mönchengladbach. I don't think they're going to have as good of a year this year. I think they'll drop a little bit. They did lose Granit Xhaka, great midfielder, great leader. He was their team captain last year. Mm-hmm. He transferred to <laughs> Arsenal. So I would say Bayern Munich finished one. I would say Dortmund finished two. Bayern Munich beat Borussia Dortmund in the standings by 10 points last year. I think that's kind of fair this year, maybe a little closer. Dortmund, definitely a, a team that's very capable. But look at some of the players they lost this year. They lose Mats Hummels to Bayern Munich. They lose Ilkay Gundogan over to Manchester City. Mm-hmm. You know, they lost a lot of great players. They did bring some more in. They bring in they bring in Mario Gutze back. They bring in Andre Schürrle over from Wolfsburg. So they brought in some capable players, but they did lose a lot as well. And I think the big loss is going to be Mats Hummels. He's going to really add a lot to that German, that that Bundesliga, that Bayern Munich flavor. You know, mm-hmm. he's really going to add a lot to Bayern Munich. And pairing him up with Jerome Boateng, David Alaba, Philip Lahm on that on that back four, I think that's going to be a force to reckon with. I think Bayern Munich maybe did more than any team, maybe some more important signings to maybe strengthen that squad for European football, for Champions League. Mm-hmm. So I think Bayern Munich are definitely going to be the favorites. I do like Dortmund to finish second. I'd say probably Bayer Leverkusen maybe in third. Chicharito is going to be out a couple of weeks. Striker from Mexico. He's got a fractured hand. So he'll probably be out a little bit, but he should be able to come back in and score goals as he was last year for Bayer Leverkusen. One team that really took a drop last year was Wolfsburg. They finished Mm -hmm. eighth with 45 points. This was the team that was in the Champions League last year. Obviously, they sold Kevin De Bruyne to Man City last year. It's a big loss. He's one of the best midfielders in the world, I would say. That's a big loss for them. Maybe they can rebound this year. What I'm looking forward to most with the Bundesliga this year is looking at some of the really good young players. Mm -hmm. I want to see more of Julian Draxler. He looked great in the European Championships for Germany. And then really one player from each of these two teams, from Bayern Munich and Dortmund. When you look at Bayern Munich, I want to look at Renato Sanchez. They just brought him in from the Portugal side, Benfica. He's only 18 years old, and he's already won a European championship with Portugal. He started on that team, like I said, only 18 years old. It's going to be crazy. I don't see him to, I don't expect him to get a lot of first-team action, at least early on right away. That midfield there is really, really competitive for Bayern Munich. But then the other side, I look at Borussia Dortmund. I look at Ousmane Dembele. He's a 19-year-old footballer from France. They just brought him in. He's really exciting just a young player i think he's gonna fit in great with that bvb side pair along people like pierre emmerich Aubameyang, marco royce andre Scherla, mario gutza gonna be really exciting i want to see a lot of Usman dembele okay <clears throat> excuse me um you know you, you guys can't see me but every time he mentions a player that happens to be on the german national team i'm just going crazy over here that's a reason why i like the bundesliga so much i'm glad we could talk about it and we're going to take our last break because we're going to talk about my favorite league in a minute in a minute excuse me and we're going to update you on this weekend's action in the premier league so we'll be right back guys here at the what's it been the golden state media concepts soccer podcast mm-hmm. do you want to be healthier yet you just don't know what to do all these shows telling you this and that but nothing seems to work well listen close golden state media concepts has got something great for you the health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends healthy eating habits diet and everything about healthy living join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest but live it to the healthiest
And welcome back to the Golden State Media Concept Soccer Podcast. We have games currently going on in action. We have the English League Cup going on. We have Liverpool with a 2-0 lead in the 29th minute over Burton Albion. We have goals from Divac Origi and Roberto Firmino. Definitely looking to rebound after their result on Saturday, a 2-0 defeat against Burnley. We'll jump back. We'll jump in talking about that in the segment after we do these updates. So we have Chelsea. They're also playing in the Football League second round. They're over Bristol Rovers. Bristol Rovers right now. They have a 1-0 lead. It's Michi Batshuayi, who just scored in the 29th minute, scored a goal against Watford over on Saturday as well for Chelsea. Moving in to that Chelsea starting 11 quite, quite nicely. And then Everton, they have a 1-0 lead over Yuval Town. They have a goal from Aaron Lennon in the 28th minute. They have a 1-0 lead. And we have Champions League football going on right now, Alex. We have some of the play-in games. So this today and tomorrow is, for some teams, going to be the last determining factor if they get in to the Champions League group stage, which the draw for that will be on Thursday. Of course, we're going to break down the group stages for the Champions League on next week's episode on Tuesday. So we have right now, we have FC Porto with a 1-0 lead over AS Roma. We had a goal from Felipe in the eighth minute, and Porto have a 2-1 to aggregate lead in that game. So Roma need to get a goal back or else they will not be in the Champions League this year. Yeah, they sure won't. But we're going to move and talk about the Premier League now. And uh, action that was this weekend, uh, starting on Friday, we had Manchester United play Southampton, and they did escape there with a 2-0 victory. Both goals coming from new Red Devils, Latan Ibrahimovic, the first of which coming on a header in the 36th minute, and a 52-minute penalty as well from the Swedish long-haired ponytailed man that calls himself Zlatan. What did you think of this game? He's just been nothing but impressive since showing up there uh, at Old Trafford. What do you think? Absolutely. He's got four goals in his last three games. If you include the Community Shield goal against Leicester City, he scored mm-hmm. He scored a goal in their game against Bournemouth, their season opener. And then he had two goals against Southampton, as you mentioned. We also saw the debut of record signing Paul Pugba from Manchester United. I thought they played really well. Man, you looked really, really, really good. Against Southampton, a side I think that are going to sort of falter this year a little bit. Always saw a lot of their great players sold Sadio Mane to Liverpool. Mm -hmm. So I think Southampton are going to falter a little bit. They did finish sixth last year. I would not expect them to finish that high this year. But Man United win in their home debut at Old Trafford. Jose Mourinho, Paul Pogba. Quite some hair on the guy, huh? Yeah, definitely. He's got quite some hair. He always throws up some interesting hairstyles, does Pogba. I thought he played really well. He had a good chance. He's almost scored a couple of goals. Almost got a header there. Yeah, late. he's a he's a big body, so 6'2", 6'3". Mm, he's, yeah. he's very capable of winning headers in the box. Can provide a lot offensively, defensively. I think they're really going to be a force to reckon with this year. With the addition of Ibrahimovic, Pugba, Mkhitaryan, who you haven't seen start yet, but I think I think he will eventually replace Juan Mata on that right-hand side. Mm-hmm. And Eric Bailly, the center back, he's really been, in my opinion, their best player since the season started. He's really... A rock back there. And I think once Chris Smalling comes back, they'll form a really, really good center pack. Center back duo, I should say. Okay. So a couple more games just to highlight. Uh, Man City did have a pretty solid win over Stoke City there. 4-1. Liverpool lost to Burnley 2-0. Yeah, ouch. Yeah, Swansea City lost to Hull City 2-0. The Tottenham Hotspurs did beat Crystal Palace 1-0. Chelsea came out on top 2-1 over Watford. Everton came over. I'm sorry, came on top over Ever, um, Everton won over West Bromwich, excuse me, 2-1. And then I'll let you go ahead and handle the last one just because I just want to see your insight on it. You know, I handled my team. I'll let you handle your team. I don't want to speak. You're talking about of Saturday's Premier League games? Yes, sir. So we had to close out to the Saturday games. We had Leicester City against Arsenal, a sort of first meeting of last season's first and second place teams. Leicester City winning it last year, Arsenal finishing second. We had quite the un sort of entertaining game we had a nil nil draw between Leicester and Arsenal I'd say for the game I think it's a really good point for both sides for uh, both sides lost their first game you know Arsenal losing to Liverpool 4-3 in week one and then Leicester losing to Hull City 2-1 so I think it's a good point for both sides I'd say more so a good point for Arsenal because they were, weren't without their full squad they did not have Mesut Ozil starting Laurent Koscielny came back, and he f- was literally a rock back there. It's crazy how much one player can sort of impact things. 
and really form that, form that solid foundation. They got absolutely opened up by Liverpool. And then Leicester City have some great attacking options. Riyad Mahrez, Jamie Vardy, Ahmed Moussa. But they weren't able to really get past Koscielny. He really had a man-of-the-match performance, in my opinion. And then he went along with Rob Holding, the young 20-year-old. I was surprised to see Holding starting ahead of Chambers. Callum Chambers is a lot more experienced in the BPL. But, the, but Arsene Wenger decided to go with Rob Holding. And he played quite good alongside Laurent Koscielny. So interesting to see if that's going to be the center back pairing for the future until we get people like Gabriel and Mertesacker back. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a good point for Arsenal because they did not have their full squad. They were facing the defending champions in their first home game of the season. Think about how emotional that game is, the atmosphere. They kept a clean sheet. I think that's a good point for Arsenal. They're going to play their next game on Saturday against Watford, who just lost to Chelsea 2-1. Arsenal, that should be a game they should be able to handle. Handle Watford, maybe it's something like 2-0, 3-0, something along those lines. So if they're able to do that, I think they'll be okay for the season because they're already five points back of, of the Manchesters, Hull City, Chelsea. You know, they're already five points back after losing their first game and drawing on Saturday. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, moving towards Sunday's action and closing out, just to recap here. We did have uh, the matchup between Middlesbrough and Sunderland. Uh, Middle Middlesbrough coming up on top 2-1. And West Ham United did defeat AFC Bournemouth 1-0. Yeah, West Ham opening their brand new stadium, the London Stadium. Looked really, really nice. Really, really good stadium. After coming over from the Bowland ground, which they had for over 100 years. Brand new stadium that's really emotional. It was a great stadium. A good result for West Ham. They got a goal from Antonio there in the 85th minute to win the game. They did not have Dimitri Payet in that game. Andy Carroll's going to be out four to six weeks, it looks like. So tough for West Ham. But they do come out on top over Bournemouth. I thought that was a good result for them and a game they should have won. So, All right. Well, we look forward to action starting on Saturday and heading through the rest of the weekend. I'm pretty excited. Are you excited, Ben? I'm always this, excited this for the, the BPL. This is your favorite time of year, right? It is. It is. Definitely. The season just started. Then we had La Liga kickoff over the weekend. We had some great games. We had Real Madrid come out on top 3-0, two goals by Gareth Bale. No real surprise there. Barcelona beat Real Betis 6-2. Mm. Leo Messi had a goal. Luis Suarez had a hat trick. He scored a beautiful free kick there. I mean, Barcelona, even without Neymar, just not even showing any effect. You know what mm. I mean? They're doing great. Barcelona did say they are going to keep Neymar out of action until after the international break, probably about two, three weeks from now. Give him some time off. Get him back up to speed with Barcelona just finishing up with the Olympics. And then really the big surprise for me was we talked about in our La Liga preview last week, Atletico Madrid being that third team that can really challenge for the league. They ended up drawing their game against Alavis 1-1. Real Madrid, I'm sorry, not Real Madrid. Atletico Madrid score in stoppage time. They score in the 93rd minute. Everyone's thinking it's going to be a win for them. And then they give up a goal in the 95th minute to Alaves and get a draw. Really disappointing result for for Atletico Madrid. I keep saying Real Madrid. <laughs> but a really disappointing result for Atletico Madrid. A game they should have won. And they already dropped two points to Barcelona and to Real Madrid. Tough tough loss there. Yeah, it's a tough start draw. for them. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely tough. So on, in La Liga, we have week two starting. We have not really any games that really stick out to me. But you never know. Some of these games could always surprise you. That's very true. You never know with with football. You never know. Some days you're just off. Some days you're just on. Absolutely. And then I guess we'll do a quick recap of last week's League One action in France. We had Lyon with a 2-0 win. We had two more goals from Alexander Lacazette. He's got five goals in two games. And if any team wants to buy him in the transfer window in the next week, it's probably going to cost him at least another 20, Euro, 20 million euros because mm -hmm. he's having a great start to Lyon season it looks like he's going to stay though so i doubt he would move we had psg winning 3-0 over mets definitely a good result for them they are joint top with leon right now with six points and really those are the two teams that really stick out to me in the french league league one the two teams that should compete for the title but i say more so psg than leon mm -hmm. we did our preview a couple yeah, weeks ago you so. know it absolutely so in the bpl coming up this weekend we have some good games on on sort of slate here. The one game that sticks out to me is Tottenham against Liverpool. That will be Saturday morning, 4.30 Pacific time, 7.30 Eastern. Two teams that really need some positive results. Liverpool coming off that defeat against Burnley, 2-0. Definitely, definitely a disappointing result. And Tottenham, a team who haven't really 
got things going. They did win their last game. They did come out on top over Palace 1-0. They have a goal from Victor Wanyama. But then in the first game of the season, they draw against Everton 1-1. So only two goals in the season for Tottenham. They got to try and get things going. The game that kind of sticks out to me is Hull City against Manchester United. Hull City, a team that just got promoted from the championship. So they're back in the Premier League. But they're third on the table right now, winning their first two games. They beat Leicester City in week one. They won over Swansea 2-0 last week. Definitely surprised to see Hull City two wins out of two games. I don't think they can really compete with Man United, but who knows? We'll have to see this weekend. Yeah, I'm going to try to watch that game on Sunday morning. I should be I should be home for that one. Yeah, it'll be it'll be Saturday at 9:30 actually. So yes, sir. so maybe you should be able to get it the it should be on NBC. So I have Fox the, Sports 1 too in case it's on there. Fox Sports 1 will probably have play a the lot of Bundesliga. Premier League. Well, I'll try to catch um I'm going to try to catch Bayern Munich's first game also. Yeah, there you go. That's going to be on uh, Friday. So, mm-hmm. And then a game that kind of sticks out to me, maybe, that could be exciting on Sunday is Man City against West Ham. West Ham going to be home at the London Stadium again. Man City, a team that looked really, really dominant through two games. I'd say more so last weekend against Stoke City. They won that game 4-1. You had two goals by Sergio Aguero as well as two goals by Nolito. Man City really moving the ball around. They've completed the most passes of any team in the Premier League. So far, and I think that's really the Pep Guardiola effect. He really likes to move the ball around, quick passes, runs in behind. So I think that's a game that could maybe make some noise. It was a really entertaining game last year, a thriller that ended in 1 1 draw at the bowling ground. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely exciting. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for all the soccer. I mean, football is getting started also, so I'm super excited for NFL football, but soccer is a, a fun time of year, too, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And. Now in in some of our games, just a quick update before we leave. We still have a 2-0 lead right before halftime for Liverpool over Bert, Bertrand Albion. And Chelsea actually opening up the floodgates. We have a 3-1 lead for Chelsea over Bristol Rovers. We had a goal from Victor Moses and Michi Batshuayi, obviously, as I mentioned earlier. Everton still have a 1-0 lead over Yuval Town. And Porto have a 1-0 lead over Roma. Games going, games going. Absolutely. In the in the English League Cup, you see a lot of uh, the Premier League teams kind of dominate early on because they're playing lower lower division teams, and you see a lot of people that get rested. Really, before we leave, a big storyline that's kind of breaking right now is you could see the possibility of Joe Hart, as we mentioned last week, leaving Manchester City. He still has not played for them in their first couple of games. He did not play in the Champions League game last week. There's possible that he could play this week. And Pep Guardiola, the Man City boss, he's not ruling out a move to bring in Claudio Bravo. According to Sky Sports, which is the big sort of sports organization mm-hmm. over in England, that Claudio Bravo, the the keeper for Barcelona and from Chile, he is set to have his Manchester City medical within the next 48 hours. So if that, if that happens, you can kind of say bye-bye to Joe Hart at the Etihad. That's going to be something we got to keep our eye on for next week's show. Absolutely. I mean, we're going to have to do that. You know, next week's show, we're going to be talking about the Champions League group stage, the draws on Thursday, as we mentioned earlier, breaking down all the top games that went on this weekend, and really just the big storylines in soccer. Oh, man, I can't wait. I can't either. You going to be up early this week? You going to watch any games? Yeah, I'm going to try to catch the Man U game. Um, I work. Oh, I don't work on Friday. I'm going to try to catch the um, Bayern Munich game. Uh, I think I might check the West uh, Ham Manchester City game, and uh, I don't know. That might that might be it this year. I don't know. I might check the Arsenal game too. The yeah, Arsenal against Watford at seven them. o'clock. But I definitely want to watch the Man United game. Yeah, I'm surprised that whole city has had such a start. I mean, they didn't play two teams that really stick out to me as big big favorites this year. But they've defeated the champions in match day one. That mm-hmm. that's saying something. And then they defeat Swansea 2-0. This is a side that just got promoted, but yet they're already two out of two wins, and now they're battling Manchester United. I guess if they can maybe escape with a point, maybe if they can get a draw, I think that'd be a good result for them. I don't really see any chance of them winning it, but hey, you never know. This is the Premier League. Anything can happen. Yeah, that's very true. I'm really excited to watch that one. Absolutely. I'll definitely keep my eye on that one for you. Thanks, Ben. I'll wake up to all your tweets. Yeah, check my Twitter. It's going to be live on there. All right. Well, yeah, you're the only person I know that live tweets soccer. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get out of here, but 
we're going to remind you that you can always find us on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play at the GSMC Soccer Podcast, as well as on our website, gsmcpodcast.com, Instagram and Twitter at gsmc underscore soccer, and YouTube and Facebook at the Golden State Media Concepts or GSMC Soccer Podcast. Uh, as always, I am Alex. And I am Ben. And we will see you guys next week. Hope you have a good week. Hope you guys watch a lot of soccer. I know Alex and I both will. And we just hope you stay safe and have a good week. Yeah, I agree with you, Ben. Thank you. We will see you guys next week.